All right, guys, a bit of a departure from my usual content today. So I'm going to start off by telling you a few facts. Fact number one, I've turned off monetization for this video. This video is all about trying to make a positive change in the world. I think it'd be a bit ridiculous if I stuck monetization on this. Uh, so I've turned that off for this video. Uh, and like I say, it's a departure from my usual content. Normally at this channel, what we're talking about is sneakers. Uh, and I don't really want to get into current affairs. Uh, you know, I've dipped into the coronavirus a little bit from a fact sharing point of view of what it's like here in Tokyo, Japan and things like that, but not really getting into the politics of it and how well vaccine rollouts are going and things like that. Uh, and then uh, politics, you know, I don't really get into that. Religion, don't really get into that. Just keep it to the sneakers. But there is a slight overlap between what I do with this YouTube and the political world right now. And what I'm talking about is the state of affairs in America. And the big thing that I'm talking about in particular is big tech because big tech's in the spotlight especially social media and we're talking twitter we're talking facebook uh, we're talking youtube we're talking google uh, those kind of firms who have a very high and strong social media preference uh, presence um they're under the spotlight you know uh, for a couple of reasons one of course is because of the situation with president trump Maybe when you're watching this as former President Trump by the time uh, this video you know, comes to you guys out there uh, and his Twitter account and how that for a long time uh, continued and was used uh, and then shut down. Again, I'm not going to get into the, the yes or no right to wrong side of that, the moral element of that. Uh, what I'm interested in, though, is the actual implications for us, the normal people and social media. Uh, and what I'm talking about, uh, so you've got, you know, that, that element with Twitter and President Trump. Uh, but what, what I'm talking about is there's always always been this running sort of battle between uh, the US Congress, the US government and these big firms. We're talking Facebook, we're talking Twitter, uh, we're talking Google and firms like that. So, uh, and YouTube, me being a YouTuber, that's where I come into play on this. So what I'm going to do in today's video is I'm going to tell you and hopefully a few people like you uh, out there what the solution is, in my opinion, for these big tech companies. That's the point of this video. Now, what the point of this video isn't is to get into the more morals of it, the right and the wrong of it. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's where you get into gray areas and things like that, into um, different people's perspectives and opinions, which is great to share. I totally agree with people having their own opinions. And I say it my channel all the time, it's okay to have difference of, uh, differences of opinion and still be friends. Uh, but my element, the thing that I want to get on this is uh, I've got an idea that I think can help the big tech companies. And what I'd like you, the viewer, to do is to think about it think you know okay that's an idea that's been presented to me uh is it a good idea or not and then if you agree and it is a good idea go ahead and share this video because i really think this could be an important bridge an important point between where the big tech companies are and where the government is uh and and of course what happens in america has implications for the rest of the world in terms of internet accessibility and things like that so uh, even though i'm here in japan even though i'm british the situation in america is having a big impact especially on me as a youtube YouTube channel uh, content creator. So, uh, so today's video all about that big tech. What is the solution? Uh, to me, basically, what's going on is that you've got people who want regulation for big tech over here, and then you've got big tech who want to have it all free and all their own way. Uh, and the, the situation, the, the regulation, the point of this regulation is that people feel like the freedom that big tech has is abused by big tech or the people who use their services. Uh, and then they basically generate cycles of negativity. That's the situation with uh, you know Facebook, with Twitter and social media accounts like that, Instagram, things like that. Um, and I've got a solution for the big tech guys out there, which I think the governments would be able to accept. And I think the big tech companies would be able to accept uh, because basically what it boils down to is that people aren't really thinking about alternatives. What they're doing is they're thinking about what they believe in and what they um, want to see in the world. And what the big tech companies do is they perpetuate that. Now, if you don't know much about the algorithm, uh, that's fine. Most people don't know about the algorithm. It's when you start creating content that you hear about this algorithm. But basically, all the big tech companies uh, have an algorithm. And that's where the problem lies basically generally in society and, and with this situation between the regulators and between the companies themselves. And that's where I think the solution lies as well, which will satisfy both sides of the argument. So the algorithm in a very simple explanation, the algorithm is a big, huge maths 
equation. And what it does is it takes account of a bunch of different things. Now, being a YouTuber, I can talk knowledgeably about the YouTube algorithm. And what it does is it takes account of a bunch of stuff. How long do people watch my videos for? How often do people click on the adverts around the side of my videos? Uh, how often do people go from my videos to another video on YouTube? Or how often do people go from my videos off of YouTube? And they can track all of those things. And what they do is they decide whether or not my videos will appear on the side menu or the menu below a video that you're watching. Those videos that appear there are not random. They're not random at all. YouTube is reading you, the viewer's performance of what you do, what you watch for a long time, what are you interested in, and then it populates all that stuff around the edge of the video with things that YouTube thinks you will like so that you'll click on them and then continue staying on YouTube. It's about keeping you, the customer, on their service for as long as possible. So if my videos do really well, people watch them a lot and go from my videos to other videos on YouTube, then that algorithm reads that and says, oh, this guy right here is gonna generate advertising money for us, uh, view time for us, keep the customer interested in on YouTube so we'll promote his videos and put them around other people's videos. Oh, you know what? People just jumped away from left YouTube and went to somewhere else well, in the middle of this guy's video or didn't interact with the adverts around the site or oh, useless, don't need him uh, so don't bring his videos up and around the sort of um, the screen and around the, the the extra stuff that you the viewer can click on so that that's how the algorithm works it basically tracks the viewers performance and then it tries to generate the, the content uh, for you the viewer to click on and continue staying on YouTube and that's the same for Facebook and it's the same for Instagram and it's the same for Twitter uh, because what you see is especially what you'll see is things like on Facebook with their video feed that they have on there, if you watch a certain kind of video, then suddenly that kind of video is appearing an awful lot further down the feed. Uh, or, you know, if you search for certain kind of products, that's the kind of products that appear in the ads around your content. Uh, and all of that is about this algorithm, this massive maths equation that's tracking a bunch of different things. We're talking hundreds of different things. It's not as simple as I'm making it sound today, but tons and tons of different things. Uh, and, and that basically that algorithm is the root of this and that's the solution. And what I think needs to happen is that that algorithm needs to 50-50 populate the suggested content around people's viewing time with the things that they're interested in and then the opposite perspective. Okay, that's what I think is the basic bottom line of what the big tech companies need to do. And I think that will keep the governments and the regulators satisfied because they're balancing out perspectives and you're not just churning out the same stuff over and over again on people's, for example, on Facebook, on their newsfeed. Because um, right now that's what happens. If you, um, let's say that you are interested in cars and you watch a video about cars and then the suggested content is all about cars, 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 cars. And and you're interested in, uh, I don't know, five liter, um, you know, huge muscle cars, then that's all the content that you'll get around your video or around your newsfeed or whatever it is, whatever the social media is, is these muscle cars churning out tons of, you know, gasoline and, and not particularly great for the environment. So you will never see content about electric cars or about environmentally friendly cars. Uh, and what I think YouTube needs to do and what I think Twitter needs to do and what I think Facebook needs to do is they need to populate those suggested content things 50-50 with stuff that does reinforce what people are already looking at. Oh, I'm looking at muscle cars, I'm looking at muscle cars, here's a bunch of muscle car videos. But it also offers the other 50%, the alternative view, something from the other end of the spectrum so that people have the option to look at other things and, and expand their experience. Because I think the bottom line is the problems that we have in the world with social media right now, I think the bottom line is, is that people are just, this, they call it an echo chamber. Basically, you're just going over over and over again with the same content and the same voices and the same information coming to you over and over again. And it's just because you read one news story, it's about a certain particular thing going on in the world. And then the suggested content is like, oh, that was interesting. So here's more about that same thing. And then people are just staying in their narrow worlds and not actually going out there and seeing, right, what's an alternative here? Okay, I watched a video that said muscle cars are the best things in the world. 
What's an alternative to that? Muscle cars are the worst thing in the world. Muscle cars are the safest thing in the world. Muscle cars are the cleanest thing in the world. Muscle cars are the most polluting things in the world. So it shouldn't just be always sort of reinforcing what the viewer wants to see because they've stayed on that and they've shown the algorithm, this is what I want to see. This should be 50-50 in there. And I know, I know that these big tech companies can do that. They can write it into their algorithm that if you watch a video about X, then we will give the suggested content around you will be half about X again, but also about B at the other end of the spectrum so that you're getting different perspectives. And then the viewer out there can look into it and say, right, okay, I've seen this, but I want to see what other people think about this. Now, personally, I watch the BBC a lot for my news. I'm British from the UK. I trust the BBC mostly. I mean, it's a news outlet. I know that's not perfectly trustable, but I basically trust the BBC. And I would say that somewhere that's a little bit different to the BBC would be Fox News. Now, I rarely watch Fox News, but every so often, every so often, I'll go to Fox News deliberately and look at what's going on there to make sure that I'm getting a round perspective of what's going on in the world. And I'm not just getting this one line and trusting that one line. And I think that's one of the skills that's missing from the world right now. And it's one of the dangers of algorithms in social media is that basically people just get the same content content over and over again, maybe different voices, uh, but it's basically the same sort of stuff that's coming. So if it's liberal news in the States and you're getting it from say CNN and Huffington Post and that's all you get in your news feed, then that's all you see. And you have no other way of getting out there and finding more information and different perspectives. But the other side is, is you know, Fox News is Breitbart, I think it's called. And then that's just, that's all you see and you don't have those other perspectives. So I think it's on the tech companies to give a better rounded perspective in that suggested content. Now that'll be difficult for those big tech companies because what will happen is that people will stay on their sites less. If you offer 10 videos about muscle cars to somebody who just watched a video about muscle cars, there's a great chance that they're going to click on another video and go for it. But if you offered five videos about muscle cars and five videos about, you know, um, zero emission cars, you're, you're, you know, you're cutting 50% chance out of that person staying on your site. But what you are doing is giving that person a wider perspective of the world. And that's where I think we need to go with these big tech companies with social media. And they can definitely do it. It's not that hard to write that into the algorithm and make sure that people out there are getting a multiple perspectives and able to dip in to uh, different views and look at a problem, look at a situation from many different perspectives and get people's opinions and not just churning out the same stuff. Oh, this is this reinforces what I believe and, and so I believe it more and then I see more of that, it reinforces it. And and after a while you're only you know you're a little hamster running around in a little wheel and all you're just churning around is the same stuff over and over again. You need to get that three dimensional perspective and instead of two by dimensions. So for me, that's the next step. You know, if, if, uh, if you go full regulation of the internet and social media and stuff like that, I don't think that's going to work. All you'll do is you'll force people into underground, you know, ways of dealing you know, with, with stuff and connecting and, and less public ways. And you'll end up uh, marginalizing people into these small little groups. But, uh, but right now what it's doing is too open. Uh, and I think what needs to happen, like I say, is the big tech guys need to do a better job of making sure that, yeah, of course, they're after their profit but also making sure that people can get to see different things and not just that repeated cycle of information. So for me, that's the next step for big tech companies. Now, I don't know if people will agree with that or not, um, but I just, uh, you know, I've said this many, many times over the last couple of years that I think about, especially American politics, I think about senators in America uh, and about how they uh, just see the same repeated cycle. But what if that's all they ever see and they don't have any, you know, other stuff there? busy people, you know, and it's hard to go out there and find different perspectives. But if the tech giants can just lay that out, here's a, a perspective that reinforces your view, but here's another perspective that challenges your view. And then you as a viewer will say, right, I'm going to look at one of those and decide, you know, and get a broader perspective on things. Uh, so that's my, my solution, or at least my little bit of a solution for big tech and for social media going forward. Uh, like I said, I've, I've not monetized this video. I think it's, uh, it's uh, you know, my 
little tiny micro effort to make a positive change in the world. And I think it would make a positive change. I think it would make people a bit more aware of multiple perspectives instead of just being narrowly focused in on their own perspective. So, uh, and I think that would be a good thing. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's my suggestion. Hopefully, you know, it makes sense. Uh, I don't know if I've explained it clearly enough. Uh, I don't know if people out there are, you know, open to this kind of idea. I don't know if the tech guys out there will appreciate me cutting their profits by 50% by doing this. Uh, but I do think this would be an excellent solution, an excellent way to make a bigger change in the world. And it's not just about churning out the profit and churning out the content, but also thinking about it from that, that multiple perspectives point of view. So hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully people out there agree and say, you know what, that's a great idea. We should share this idea and push it out there uh, and try and get some momentum behind it. Because right now is the time that people are going to be looking at big tech companies for the next, you know, three to six months. People will be looking at them at really intensely. And of course, that intensity will dissipate over time. So right now is the time to get behind any initiatives that can improve the field without going so far as to just sort of like completely regulate the Internet or the opposite just you know it's a free-for-all and you know so uh, I can see where there needs to be a middle ground and this is what I think is the middle ground so if you agree definitely share this video or share this idea you know if you have your own social media sites or whatever oh I saw this idea about you know changing the algorithm so that people get different perspectives and 50 50 you know for every piece of content suggested content that reinforces your idea here's another piece of content that challenges your idea that's it that's it that's as simple as it is that's all the big tech needs to do. And I think it'll be, that would create a change, a positive change in our world and give people a bit more empathy for different points of view. So, uh, so yeah, different video today. Uh, nothing about sneakers, just an idea that I've come across. And, uh, and, you know, somebody out there, you know, maybe some low level Google employee would see this video or hear about this video and watch it and go, you know what? That's an idea and it'll get like 20 views. But if one of those views is the view that makes a small change in the world, I'll certainly be happy. So thank you guys for, you know, just listening to me rabble on about my idea about what, uh, you know, we can do to make the world a slightly better place. And that's what this video is all about. So, uh, so that's today. Uh, we'll be back to the sneaker content tomorrow as usual. Every single day dropping videos on YouTube every day, seven days a week, not, not five days a week, seven days a week. Have done for something like the last 800 days without a single day missed. And we'll be back with the sneaker your content tomorrow but for now it's time to sign off thank you for checking out the content but because i do this every single day that means that you are guaranteed to see me tomorrow